Ladies and gentlemen, I just got back from Treyarch where I just played MW3 Zombies early and also received a USB containing the footage you are seeing on screen, the very world's first gameplay of MW3 Zombies showing you guys what it is, including this absolutely insane wonder weapon that they have added into this game. Alongside the returning ray gun, the wonder waft, this is the brand new one though, and it looks like it absolutely smokes zombies. This is Noah from the future. I forgot like three really, really important things to include in this. PhD flopper is back absolutely pog tombstone is back i hate my life and then also there's a zombie mastery camo grind that you can do for all guns from mw2 and mw3 there's essentially all of it is available in the game they were like this is super hard to put in but it's something we really cared about of putting in so zombie camo grind for all the guns anyway back to you Anyway, we're gonna be talking about everything that they told us about this game mode, including some secret stuff that we asked them and they actually ended up answering, like about the Easter egg quest and everything like that. But let me just first talk about what is this game? Like, how does it work? What does it play most like? I would say that this game is a battle royale map. It is literally on the battle royale map for this game because eventually there is a zone after one hour, the game sessions are one hour after one hour, a zone starts spreading and you better get on a helicopter or you just get left behind and you die. There's no extracting out. But I am saying extracting because it is also an extraction based game. If you do not extract out, you die at the very, very end. However, that means that if you extract out with stuff, you can take that into your next game. So what do I mean by that? You can find a perk can in this game. You can complete an objective, and if you get really lucky, you get a case that has a ray gun in it, and that just goes in your inventory. And you can choose to pop that case and get the ray gun instantly, or you can try to extract out on the helicopter with it and essentially load into your next game with that, use up that consume you want, and load up into the next game. I say that because it's an extraction game as well. This game is most like, you know, outbreak gameplay with an extraction spin on it. Essentially, if you like DMZ and you don't like fighting against other players, you are going to love this mode because it is all against AI. There are 24 other like real life humans sitting gaming in their chairs, 24 humans in every single match, but none of them can shoot you. None of them can hurt you. You are playing against the environment. You were just playing against the zombies. You were just playing against the AI humans that are running around. And essentially, here's the game mode. Here's how it works. You load in. You, you, everybody loads in all around the map in the basically tier one zone. This is the super, super easy zone. Everyone is going to be able to survive. You would really have to be absolutely terrible at, at zombies to die in the tier one zone. And essentially, you all spawn in there, and everybody just individually starts looting up and like getting objectives completed, buying some perks, maybe pack a punching once. And it's Essentially, once you're all set up in the first zone, whether that be, you know, 10 minutes, whether it take 20 minutes, you want to basically speed run the first zone, get ready and go into the second zone where the zombies are going to be higher level. This is like round 15, round 20 zombie is equivalent in terms of how much health they have and how set up you want to be. Once you get in this zone, rewards are better, more points, everything is better in this zone, but the zombies are also more dangerous. You're also going to start running into some mini bosses like the Mangler, stuff like that, that are just going to pose more of a threat to you. You have to really stick with your team because this game mode, is i would say a very social game mode you want to load in with friends and if you load in by yourself you really want to just kind of like join up with a random team and try to request to join their squad which you can do you can get up to six player squads but if you're going into the you know high tier zones there is almost no way that you are going to survive by yourself. This is a very social game, and I think a lot of people will actually have a lot of fun with that, but it is not for solo players is what I found. Solo play is is not, you're not it's not balanced for it. Essentially, it's balanced for playing around every one of your teammates. Uh, and it can be very, very fun. Like we, we had an absolutely massive squad, all of us driving cars and just running over like hordes of zombies. It was really, really fun. And then when you go into the tier three zone, which is obviously the most dangerous zone, that's when it starts getting real. That's when you start seeing the absolute elites. You start seeing the uh, mega abominations that have an absurd amount of health. You really want to be set up for these zones, but obviously you get the highest tier loot and everything like that. Now, you're going to be able to pick up plates. Plates are in this game. That is the armor system. Essentially, you can, you can get jug, but you also can get plates. Like the plates are really going to be what protects you from everything. You're going to plate up if you get hit too many times. You're really not going to want to take too much damage in the later zones because the zombies clap you and if you have no plates you die in like a couple hits it's really really punishing if you don't have plates plates are very very important for this game mode um the humans the zombies they all will fight each other essentially if you lead a horde of zombies into the humans they all immediately start brawling now these humans are rolling around on the map like you see on screen right here they're gonna roll around they're gonna stop if you start shooting at them you can go to different fortresses you can literally it's pinpointed on the map where the human strongholds are you can assault those you can completely avoid them it's basically like if you don't want to interact and engage with the humans 
you really don't have to. They are gonna kind of do their own thing and chill unless you engage them. If you get close to them, they're gonna attack. They are hostile. But it is possible to just completely avoid them and, uh, you know, just drive past them, everything like that. That is one thing I will say. Driving around is super, super fun because it is by far the best way to kill the zombies. Also, you're going to see here them, like, throwing some monkey bombs into the other human AIs and getting the zombie hordes to go over there and attack them and just create a distraction while they're all just chilling on the, on the bridge. It's pretty... Pretty, it's pretty entertaining. It's pretty funny. Um, but the, the humans are going to have their own rewards. The zombies are going to have their own rewards. You can basically play it how you want to. All of the stuff you're doing in this map is basically around getting stronger. You want to do contracts, which are things like, you know, go here and assassinate this, like, mini boss. Go over here and, like, activate these ether miners. Whatever the objective may be, they're all going to just give you, like, a random reward, as well as a bunch of points that you can use to spend on pack punch and everything like that. Uh, guns. Let's talk guns. Weapon rarities. Weapon rarities are back. There is, obviously, you start with, like, your gray one that you can see on screen. Then you can go to green, you can go to blue, you can go to purple, and then you can go to gold. And then you have your, like, hyper rares, which are your wonder weapons and stuff like that. Those are, like, the gold tier, even above everything else. So, uh, obviously, those are the best, but you have to get lucky. Mystery box is on the map. Perk machines are on the map. Wonder fizz is on the map. Uh, essentially, everything that you would expect in a round-based zombie mode is on the map in some capacity. Uh, you can upgrade your your armor slots by actually just picking up armors like there will be armor like you know slot holders you can pick those up and upgrade your armor slot holder and there's new drops like full armor right there which is actually going to fully restore your armor uh essentially all the normal power-ups the pickups uh the point system everything like that is kind of what you would expect if you played outbreak all this stuff works locally. Like, obviously, if you get an insta-kill, it's not going to affect everyone on the map. But all the people you're, like, immediately around will get that insta-kill as well. So, all of that stuff is to say, uh, again, this is not a solo style mode. You're going to want to roll with friends and play against all of the enemies on the map. Um, as you can see, these people are in the farthest out zone initiating an exfil. You can exfil from any any area. Basically, they want to make it like really accessible to any you know play style. If you have really, really bad friends, you can just stay in the first zone. Or if you want to go over and explore and try to find some Easter eggs and stuff like that, you can do that as well. Let's talk about the Easter eggs. So essentially what they said is all around the map are going to be a ton of Easter eggs. There's going to be a lot of stuff to find a lot of things to do, a lot of like, you know, if you know, you know type things. However, there is going to be no main Easter egg at all upon launch. Like the first map, what you're watching here, there's going to be no main Easter egg. But instead of a main Easter egg, they essentially are going to have very like guided missions that I would say that are going to tell you the story. Like you go into the mission, it tells you what to do. And essentially at the end of that, you're going to get cutscenes and stuff like that. There's three acts from what it sounded like. If you complete all the acts, you've essentially seen the whole story. On top of that, though, and, and kind of like some bright, some good bright news is that they are, you know, teasing and we didn't see any of it. There's no gameplay of it yet, but we saw in the very, very first trailer, there is actually a huge, huge world boss. And they basically alluded to like these world bosses, you better bring everyone in the server, like go around, collect everyone in your cars and go take on these world bosses because they are going to be incredibly difficult, which good. I, I want there to be like a really, really hard, like big challenge, but it is, it is basically going to be like the in-game, in-game type stuff. They talked about in-game and they said there is in-game stuff to get. Now let's talk about that. What does in-game actually look like? So there are going to be very, very rare, like schematics and blueprints that you can actually find that are not one-time use once you get them and you extract out with them and then you craft them essentially you can have a ray gun spawning into your match and once you do it once it doesn't go away it just goes on a cooldown so the ray gun they said 48 hours for the ray gun uh, obviously that might change before launch but initially they said 48 hours would be the cooldown for the ray gun and then you can get stuff and you like can craft much easier stuff like much easier to get but also easier to craft and lower cooldown is just like increase your weapon rarity by one whatever your rarity is you just spawn in with that in your inventory you can craft that once every like two hours this was the example they gave um storyline where does this story actually set it is set in the modern warfare universe we're gonna see like the soaps of modern warfare we're gonna see uh all the cold war characters and stuff like that come back it's kind of like a conjoining of the zombies world with the modern warfare world and they said a lot of stuff is explained as you kind of like play through and everything like that. And uh, where it takes place is actually in between. It's not in the Modern Warfare 3 campaigns timeline. It's actually in between Modern Warfare 1 and Modern Warfare 2. So 
Take, take from that what you will. I have absolutely no clue how it's going to fit in between those two games, but there it is. So now I've given you guys all of the facts, basically just giving you the exact info that I was given, that I asked about, that we got from the actual play session, and obviously everything that's been in that gameplay. So all that's left to talk about are my actual thoughts. And honestly, I think that this game is going to sit really, really well and actually be really fun for fans of DMZ and maybe Outbreak who maybe don't want the, really the PvP aspect of Warzone, but like the big map, driving around with friends, having a good time, just having something to shoot at, an objective to accomplish. If you start getting really good, you're like, oh, you want to try a level three run? Like, let's go into the third zone this time. Let's try to kill a mega uh, abomination, which by the way, the mega abominations have a brand new attack where since they're so big, they can't fit in buildings. They start sending in like a smoke screen uh, that just smokes you out. They're little explosive crawlers that they send into a building to get you out if you're hiding in there trying to kill the mega. Anyway, sounded really, really cool. But th th basically, I am saying that this game is going to be really, really good and really, really fun in a group. And if you like the kind of outbreak, you know, war zone-y style gameplay, again, if you're just fighting against bots. I think that people who prefer the round based experience and who likes solo like uh, personally for me i enjoy solo the most that's the game mode that really like that i that's, i love having full control of my zombies game i tried to run around in my game a little bit solo and it is straight up not a game that's built around solo you are obviously meant to be playing this as a squad and it balances the game around you you know having up to like 20 people running around again really really fun for friends and fi having like really random moments where you know you find a squad of six and your squad of six just ends up rolling around together stuff like that can be really fun but i just don't think it's very conducive to solo just because the zombies are not balanced for solo in the slightest now what they do post launch they said they are looking at you know in-game stuff post launch they said they're looking at a lot of stuff post launch so whatever take from that what you will they said essentially like we're, we're working on a lot of potential things for post-launch in terms of easter eggs in terms of gameplay the way that this is played like variations to this including all new stuff they they basically left it very open-ended but we're obviously leaving it open-ended because they can't say anything there's a lot more coming to this game it sounds like that is not just this mode or is not just like an easter egg list like you know zombie campaign that you do and then you beat kind of like a normal campaign that's just in this map I, it, essentially they are going to be working on a lot of stuff and i i think if if you're like me if you're wanting a solo experience i don't think it's too late to write that out uh before launch i think i will be personally trying to play this with friends i think it's going to be played way way better that way and that's not always a bad thing it's not exactly what i wanted i'm still optimistic in terms of like having some good times on this will it be a daily play i don't know yet i'll wait to see i only played it for an hour and obviously i wanted to play it more after that hour so i took that as a good sign but i you know me i always like to be super super optimistic and then you know not be mad if my optimism isn't met so anyway that's basically where we're at with this game that is the end of the footage that i was given so essentially let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below do you enjoy this basically all of the classic stuff is back it's just a way way different experience i would really call this like cold war 2.0 if they put or sorry not cold war like it is cold war -y, but more so outbreak 2.0 if they threw dmz stuff in it that's that's essentially what it feels like and i think that if you enjoyed either of those things you are going to have a lot of fun with this mode and can play with a lot of friends so anyway that wraps up our gameplay footage that brings us to the end let me know your thoughts on everything down below and uh let us know you know what you're gonna be doing on day one multiplayer campaign warzone it's a big game a lot to do so let me know in the comment section down below leave a like in this video if you found it informative make sure you subscribe i'll obviously be covering a whole lot of multiplayer over the next week or so and then obviously warzone and then i'm gonna obviously be coming zombies as well so that's that's my baby zombies is my baby i'm always gonna be visiting there first but luckily we have a multiplayer beta to hold us over and i'm gonna be one of the winning kids on rest it's gonna be great anyway we'll see you in the next one adios thanks so much for watching Bye bye